Hi, right, hi. Hey, yeah. what's going on? Um, so I'm just showing up. My booth? Do you want to do an interview? <laughs> uh, in, uh... Sure. Okay. Okay, so I'm here with Rack Robotics, and this guy's name is Cooper. Yes, Cooper. Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and we do electrical discharge machining. First question is, I saw a live demo here yeah. where you ha you're having people hold an electrode and destroy metal with it. Yes, yeah, so we combine high voltage and water, and we're able to vaporize any conductive material. Can I try it? Yeah, sure. Don't Wait. touch the metal part. Oh. Just grab the Wago here. Okay, what happens if I touch the metal part? Like wow, that's crazy. But I, I want to do this now. Now that yeah, I've seen you not right. get electrocuted, so I feel just more comfortable. Put it in to, uh, and from the side, gentle pressure. Wow. Wow. Come and get a close up of this. This is insane. You can just cut straight through metal <laughs> like it's nothing. Dude, the first time we put this together, I was sitting there for like an hour and a half just, just playing with it like that. Like, wow, it, it actually is a thing. Let's take a few steps back and talk okay. about the process because sure. I don't quite understand what's going on there. Okay. Is, so, it, is it melting the metal? Sort of, it's vaporizing the metal. EDM functions by taking two pieces of metal. You've got the tool and you've got the work piece. And you apply an electrical potential across those. So positive on the work piece generally, negative on the tool. And when you get them close to one another, there's a dielectric breakdown between the two pieces in the water. So a lightning bolt jumps across there, and that lightning bolt vaporizes part of the tool and it vaporizes part of the work. And then you shut off that lightning bolt. And then you turn it back on, and you do that 5,000, 20,000 times a second. And you're taking little chunks out of the work. So the lightning bolt only forms at the closest point between the two pieces of metal. So every time you erode a part of that, there's a different spot that's now the closest piece. When we're doing this, we're actually turning on and off a spark gap 5,000 times a second to vaporize that metal. Hmm. And so the vapor re-solidifies as a little hollow sphere under the water and it falls down as waste. And you can see that this is actually pretty, the water's pretty dirty right now. And oh, we, that's gross. This is a brass and aluminum um, like slurry now. Is that it, good for skincare? You know, I've heard that aluminum oxide can be used in burn salve, but I don't know about brass. We've had actually people ask us if we can use this as like a selective laser melting uh, feedstock. Yeah, then I know what that like is. The, the big, uh, like metal 3D printing with lasers. Like, can you use that powder as like a laser, three, like metal laser 3D printing process? Maybe, I don't know, we haven't tried it. Oh, that powder. Yeah, that, okay, powder, that okay. waste powder. I just want to make sure I understand the technology. Mm -hmm. So sure. how come, when you take the high voltage and you put it across the, you touch it. Yeah. How come it just doesn't cause a short circuit and uh, and just stick to it and right. and blow everything up? That's because we're not touching it, so it's non-contact. They on, the electrodes only get very close together. I can touch it. Oh. Oh, you see. Oh. And that's when we short it out. You hear okay. that kind of whining, and it stops machining. But right now, you're not actually touching it. The vaporization. Uh, basically the water and metal exploding ah. in that spot is pushing the brass rod okay. away. I, I completely understand this now. It's like when the kids are like, I'm not touching you. It's that I'm exactly. Not touch and but there's just not. lightning in there. Yeah. <laughs> but if you actually touch, then it starts squealing. Right, yeah. And when you do that, it'll start heating up the electrode, it'll heat up the work. If you're doing it with wire, it'll heat it up so much that it just snaps immediately. And so like, You'll see, if you ever play around with wire EDM, you will see wire breaks. That's because there was a short circuit and the wire heated up so much, it just got red hot and pulled apart. Well, that's kind of a good safety mechanism, it I is. guess. So what are you doing here? Because I heard this was a 3D printing convention. Yes. Okay, so, so that's not a 3D printer. No, well, this is, or it used to be. So what we're doing is we're bringing open source electrical discharge machining to the world of 3D printing. So something that I've had a lot of frustration with in the previous years with 3D printing was the inability to easily make complex metal parts. Because not every single part can be made out of plastic. Like this, this is a three millimeter piece of aluminum. And we cut out this profile in about 20 to 25 minutes with wire EDM. You can't produce geometry like that with machining because of how small Exactly. The, we, the tool head would need to be. We're using a wire that's 0.3 millimeters in diameter. And here's, here's another piece that actually helped me with this specific project. So this is a support for the tension arm on the tool we made over here. So we cut out this part with EDM, 
we print this part with a cavity in it, pause, insert the metal, and then print over that later. So the part that's under the most load on the machine, it's under a constant load. So PLA is gonna creep over time. But with the three millimeter aluminum in there, it's not gonna creep. So we're doing an electrical discharge machining power supply, but we're also making it open source. And there are certain 3D printed components on here, and it's meant to interact with 3D printers as the motion system for the machining. You know, I see a lot of this stuff around oh, here. People are making this. toys oh, yeah. and, and trinkets. Sure, yeah. But you're making something that's actually useful. Well, I mean, you could still make, like, we're making keychains with this, but yeah, well, I Well, that's I not agree. useful, so that's a bad example. <laughs> It's incredibly important for people to be able oh, to make parts free. out of metal, especially if they're doing something for business or if they have a project that's under some level of uh, time pressure. Yeah. So like, if you're working with someone like Send Cut Send, you're gonna be waiting at least like five days to get your parts. Even if you're rush ordering stuff, you're still waiting almost a whole week. Yeah. Whereas if you're able to make stuff on your desktop, it's only gonna be like an hour or two for smaller parts. Right. So not only are you gonna be able to make parts that are not plastic now, you're gonna be able to make them really quickly and you're not gonna have to worry about things like, oh, am I gonna break this drill? Am I gonna break this end mill? Electrical discharge machining is a non-contact machining process. It's low force. You're gonna get a consistent surface finish on all of your parts when you machine with it. So this is an example of something we cut. Holy cow. We cut that with um, the Ender 3. And you can see there's a really inconsistent material thickness, but we're still able to cut that. And then the other thing we cut was this is the hot end that was on that Ender 3 before we put the wire tool on there. Wow. So you've got brass, aluminum, steel, hardened steel all together in one piece that was cut in one go. There's a lot of use cases out there in industry and hobbyist stuff where you want a hardened material. Like if it's a wear plate or if it's a mold or a die, there's, yeah. like those are the reasons why you need hardened material. I and mean, the nice thing about hardened materials is they're so hard but then when you go to cut them to make them in the first place, right. it's like, why is this so hard? Exactly, exactly. So this EDM doesn't care about hardness of your material. We've been die plunging in AR500 steel, mm -hmm. and you can also uh, do tungsten carbide. We've been doing some wire on that too. How do you view this invention you've created over here fitting into the 3D printing community? The thing I mentioned earlier with supporting 3D prints, having metal inserts in your 3D prints where you really need them, that could be really useful as opposed to saying, oh, I'm gonna mill out this whole part out of like aluminum um, billet, right? Mm -hmm. Now I can just have placed supports in that part. Or for instance, with stuff like this, you can cut out a thin piece of material, stamp it with 3D printed dies, and then bend it into shape. And now you have much better strength for a much lighter part. I mean, that's a nice story, but I think what a lot of 3D printers would be worried about is that you'll put them out of a job. Because I could see this easily taking over no, I, I, I don't think so. This is definitely a complementary technology to 3D printing. It's something that's going to be used to augment it, and it's something that's going to be used for um, like small businesses and industrial tooling for those businesses. The limitation here is with wire EDM, your machining happens in the XY plane. So you're not going to get those, um, those deep geometries. You can cut with this specific tool up to 32 millimeters in thickness. Hold on, so 32 millimeters. I have my calculator oh, watch no, here. Yeah. I just have to do this. Oh, that's awesome. That's 12. That's, hold on, I did my math wrong. 1.25 inches? Yeah, close to that. That's an inch and a quarter. For those of you who don't speak, you know, the metric stuff. <laughs> you can't even use decimals for Imperial. You have to use the, point, the quarter. <laughs> yeah, I, I see all the digits and I get confused. So I, I like it when there's only two numbers mm. and there's a slash in between them. <laughs> it's definitely a complementary technology. I see it as being really useful. Even here, I didn't make this all out of aluminum. I put the aluminum face plates in the little like, stealth burner face there. Is that a new product, the, the yes. wire one? Yes, yeah, so these are both new products. This is the PowerCore V2. It's, uh, it's on pre-order right now and we're shipping it in the next, I think three-ish weeks is when we expect them to start going out the door. And once we get those shipping, that's when we're going to release the uh, GitHub and printables pages with all of the source. Oh, so you're open source? Yeah, yep. So why would you open source that when someone could just steal your design? That's kind of the idea, like for the start at least, because there's no other affordable EDM out there. And it's a really, really useful process. So I don't want people to have to pay, you know, $150,000 for a wire EDM machine to make this stuff happen. 
Having it open source is the most useful thing for everyone at this point. We're gonna make enough money selling this. We're also able to make this better faster than other people cloning us and mm. provide better uh, value add stuff. This is qualified with these materials. We have these feed rates. You know, We're able to put together software for actually doing the cam for a wire EDM. For the time being, I mean, I don't know if it's gonna have to change in the future, it might. If it's too terrible and we're getting crushed, maybe we have to close source stuff. But for the time being, we are releasing this stuff open source completely firmware, PCB, mechanical design. Wow. And we're doing the same thing for the wire tool as well. We just want there to be more EDM out there because it's super useful. Yeah, I like electric dance music too. Um, so... <laughs> so... The of times I've heard that today, <laughs> and I still, I'm still laughing at it. So how different is this from a defibrillator? I don't know enough about defibrillators to tell you. Okay, well there's one over there we could check it out. And but defibrillator is probably a super high power pulse. Mm. Um, and it might, I don't know for certain if it's AC or DC. This is DC for certain. So if you touched it by accident, it would definitely hurt. And don't touch it. We'll leave, it, we'll I, leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. Don't touch it. Don't, <laughs> don't touch, touch the it. EDM. <laughs> this, so what? Wire EDM? It is, yes. This is uh, Strange Parts. I recognize you. Hi, I'm Cooper. I, I have seen his YouTube videos. Yeah, it's very good. I've seen good. a couple of YouTube videos too. Really cool. I love the factory tours. Oh. It's like, and like the Chinese stuff too. Yeah. Um, I love doing them. <laughs> yeah. Have you tried this yet? No. The, uh... Dude, check it out, man. Here, grab this and just. Don't touch the, the metal part. Yeah. He forgot to tell you that. Well, you read the terms and conditions, I'm sure. Try taking it in from the side and just apply gentle pressure. Oh, that's cool. Hey, Nathan Builds Robots here at the Denver International Airport. So I'm gonna give you an escalator pitch on the manufacturing services offered by JLC 3D. Um, I promise to finish by the time we get to the end of the skyway here. So basically, they have some manufacturing services that include 3D printing and metal parts, as well as CNC machining. So if you can't afford or want a rack robotics thingy to cut things out of metal, you can always go to their website. All you have to do is upload your files there, and uh, you'll get a quote within a day. Usually, they have pretty good pricing. I use it for my projects, and uh, I'll leave a referral link down in the description below if you want to try it out yourselves. All right, back to the video. Is this a tube? Yeah, that's a tube. That's, a, I think, a 0.5 millimeter OD tube. Okay, so why do you have it? Why is it a tube? Well, that's so you can flush dielectric through this. So if you're trying to do a high aspect ratio hole, you're going to want to either pump water or oil through that or pull it up through to get the waste cleared away. So you can do that super long aspect ratio hole. Uh, one of the people we've been working with, um, Michael from the Rotoforge project, he did, I think, a 100... 20 to 1 aspect ratio hole. It was something crazy like that. A regular yeah. drill bit, you can only do like 10 to 1. Or right, something. exactly. So this guy was doing a huge aspect ratio, and it was actually um, either 0.5 or 0.3 millimeter. Wow. He was doing it for some uh, glow plug 3D printer hot end project. Yeah, there's so many things you could do with this. Like you could have a curved one that like goes in at a like. Maybe. Beep. I mean, if you can rotate it around, I bet you could do that, sure. I mean, there's, the, the applications <laughs> are, are almost limitless. Right. But uh, thanks for taking the time yeah. to talk to us oh, today. Thank you so much. Really and cool to learn about this. So if someone wants to learn more, where can they go? So people can go to rackrobo.io to contact us. So they can find us on Twitter or X, whatever it's called. And we also have a Discord. And those social links are on rackrobo.io at the bottom of the page. Okay. So we love questions. We love to hear from people. And we love to have their ideas, too. So just like what people want to do with it. We want to know more about that. That sounds great. <laughs> awesome. I love your mission and uh, keep doing cool stuff. Thanks. Thanks.